Hey everyone, it's Nate here with Element Van Life. So I wanted to do a video discussing my solar system. I've had a lot of folks ask questions about the details of my off-grid power setup, so my battery isolator and my solar panel and how it's all set up. So I wanted to do a video discussing that for you guys. I just recently released a new website, elementvanlife.com. There's an article section on there and I posted an article about my solar setup as well. So that'll correspond with this. Feel free to check that out as well if you're interested. There'll be some links in there and some more details about my solar system and where I got some of the components and stuff like that. On the roof I have a 100 watt HQST flexible bendable solar panel that I got off of Amazon. This, uh, like I said, it's 100 watts. The reason that I chose a flexible panel instead of your traditional rigid panel is because it's a lot easier to secure it to the roof. I just have it taped on there using 3M VHB, very high bonding double-sided tape. It works really, really well. It's ne pretty much never coming off without a lot, a lot of effort, and uh, I really, really like it. It's also a lot more stealthy to have the flexible panel. If, if I had a traditional panel mounted on top of the roof rack, it'd be a lot easier to see from far away. This is a little bit more difficult to notice I have the wiring running through just through the uh, through where the solar uh, the sunroof opens up the reason that I did this is because I didn't really want to dr drill any holes or anything like that in the roof and it works really really well just running it through where that sunroof is it's uh, it, it has never leaked before I've never had any problems with the wire and it seems to be working really well a lot of folks might notice that the solar panel is actually partially shaded a little bit by the roof rack. I realize that, that it's like this and it definitely affects output a little bit. I don't think it's a substantial effect that it has on it and I'm going to keep it this way for now simply because it is more stealthy and it's a lot easier to mount it this way than to mount it on top of the roof rack itself. So here's just the view from where I have the solar power cable running through where the sunroof opens up. I just run it behind that handle there and then I have a piece of black felt which I use to keep it hidden and I run it all the way down to the charge controller which is at the bottom near my battery. The solar charge controller is a 30 amp PWM Renogy controller. It is, uh, it's been really, really great for me. It works out really well. The general purpose of a charge controller is just to show the state of the battery and to make sure that the battery doesn't get overcharged. So it, you can see that it has the two inputs there for the positive and negative wires coming from my solar panel and then there's a positive and negative wire that I have running directly to the battery next to it. I think it is really important to keep that connection between the charge controller and the battery relatively short and it's, it's also uh, a good thing definitely to have the charge controller in general for any solar system because it will help maintain the health of your battery. You can see on the controller that there is that there are two lights there, two green lights. The one on the left indicates that there is solar power coming into the charge controller, and the one in the middle is indicating the health or the, the percentage charge of the battery. So if it's green, it's above 50%, and then if it turns red, it's below 50%, which is never a good thing to see. I know that I've mentioned this before, but my solar system is entirely 12 volt DC. I do not run an inverter or anything like that. So in order to do that, I have this 12 volt adapter here, which I plug into just a regular female 12 volt outlet, which connects to the battery using alligator clamps. So I just have a positive and a negative alligator clamp and it just runs. And then I'm able to plug this adapter into that. And the adapter allows me to have two cigarette lighter outlets along with two USB outlets so that I can charge whatever I need to and so that I can obviously run the fridge. So here on the adapter, I've got the fridge plugged in, and then I have two USB, uh, two USB ports being used right now to charge up my extra phone battery and to charge up my GoPro battery. My battery is a 35 amp hour uh, AGM sealed battery. The reason that, that's why I don't actually have it in a ventilation case or anything like that. I'm sure that it would be a good idea to do that. I just I haven't found one that I can actually fit underneath the uh, bed area here, but it could just because of the the clearance that I have. But either way, it, it, you technically don't really have to seal them because it's AGM and it works out really really well. 35 amp hours is just enough to allow me to power the fridge overnight. Speaking of my fridge, I have a Dometic CF18 12-volt compressor fridge. 
it is one of the best things that I own. It is incredibly efficient and works really, really well to keep food cold and to keep drinks cold and things like that. Uh, the whole purpose of my solar system is to keep this guy running 24-7. That's the most important thing. The other stuff I typically will be charging at Starbucks, like my laptop and things like that. And while I can use the solar system, I tend to not because the main purpose of the solar system is to keep the fridge running at all times. As I mentioned previously, I do not typically run an inverter. I do own an inverter just in case I need to use any sort of uh, AC appliance like my electric razor sometimes needs to be charged and I'll usually just plug it into the front cigarette lighter while I'm driving around to charge up my electric razor but that's really the only thing that I use it for and but I do have it just in case I need to use AC power and then so in order to do that though I have to have certain 12 volt chargers so I do have a 12 volt laptop charger which you can see here it's a PWR plus laptop charger they have adapters for all different kinds of laptops and this one works well with my Asus laptop and then I also have a 12 volt uh, Phantom 3 charger which is good for my for my drone battery I'm able to use it to charge up my drone battery and then I also have a 12 volt electric fan which I'll run overnight sometimes if it gets really warm in here and I need to cool down a little bit so I'll plug that into that other cigarette lighter slot on the adapter back there that I just showed you all and that'll work out really really well I'm able to run the fan and run the fridge all night long so a lot of folks will ask if the 100 watt panel is enough to keep the fridge running. Uh, essentially, is it enough to charge up the battery during the day so that you have enough power to get through the night with the fridge running? And typically it is, especially in the summertime. But right now in the wintertime, I find that it's a little bit more difficult to keep it running. So what I did back in the fall was have a battery isolator switch, which you can see here, installed on the element. I paid an audio shop about, a, I think it was $100 to have this installed and it's not really a true isolator what it is is just a rocker switch that opens the connection between my deep cycle battery and the car battery and then can close the connection as well it can only be activated when the vehicle is on and you can see now under the hood that it's just that I, it's really it's just a wire that runs from the positive terminal of the car battery to the positive terminal of my house battery, and then it's also grounded off the house battery, uh, to, you know, to the vehicle here in the in, in the back. And really, what that this does is it allows me to to charge up the battery. It allows the alternator to equalize the charges between the car battery and the house battery. It was a really cheap and easy way to get an extra boost in charge. It's never going to fully charge the battery or anything like that, but it's enough to give a little bit more of a boost on these cloudy and, and winter days where there's not very many peak solar hours to kind of get me through and, and not have too many issues. So I hope this video was helpful for anybody looking into creating an off-grid solar system. I know a lot of folks will probably ask about the cost of my system entirely, and I've estimated it to be right around $400. That includes the cost for the battery isolator rocker switch and the solar panel, the charge controller, the battery, and then the adapter that I have, the 12 volt adapter so that I can run my fridge and whatever else I need to in 12 volt DC. Now, if I were to upgrade it, and I am thinking about doing so maybe for next winter, I'd probably want to get some more solar power so that I could be entirely off-grid and not rely so much on the isolator switch. So if you're starting from scratch and you don't really want to have to deal with the whole isolator thing, you could probably run this just fine with a little bit more solar. I'd say somewhere between 140 and 200 watts of solar and you'd be just fine. So at some point I'm thinking about maybe upgrading and getting a bigger panel so that I don't have to rely so much on the isolator in the winter months when it's cloudy or when it's, there's just less peak solar hours. Thanks for watching guys. Be sure to check out that article that I wrote about my solar system on my website. That has more information and links about the, uh, you know, about the solar system and where to get all the different components and stuff like that. A lot of folks ask for those links, so feel free to check that out and that has everything that you'll need in there. If you have questions, feel free to post them below. I'm happy to answer them or head over to my most recent Tuesday Q&A video and I'll answer them in person in my next Tuesday Q&A video. Thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll talk to you all in the next video.